Welcome everyone to the autoencoders section of the course. Our use of autoencoders throughout this section really falls a lot more under unsupervised learning rather than supervised learning. Recall that previously throughout the ANN section, recurrent neural networks and convolutional neural networks, we were dealing with historical data that we already had correct labels for. We either already knew what the, for instance, image label was, whether it was a dog or a cat, or whether it was uh, cancerous or benign, etc. So when we're dealing with autoencoders, our use cases for them really fall under unsupervised learning. So I want to quickly review what applications we're going to be using autoencoders for and why this is labeled as unsupervised learning instead of supervised learning. So we're going to be using autoencoders for really two main things. One is dimensionality reduction, which is pretty much what all autoencoders do to some degree. And then we'll see how we can use this dimensionality reduction to actually remove noise from images. So during the training of certain models, we actually sometimes get access to historical data with correct labels. However, during the actual use of the model, we won't be able to use our previous evaluation metrics. And that will make a lot more sense when we actually see how we construct these models and how we actually use them in a real world situation. So recall that unsupervised learning means we don't have those correct labels to compare our results to. And I should mention that our use cases for these autoencoders are actually sometimes called semi-supervised. So it's not completely unsupervised, but it's definitely not completely supervised either. So sometimes people like to call this as semi-supervised. And the reason they use this semi-supervised term is because while we're actually training the autoencoder, we do take advantage of having sometimes historical labels. However, when we're actually using the autoencoder, we don't really have a situation where we can produce some sort of nice classification report or some sort of root mean squared error. And that'll make a lot more sense when we see our use cases of dimensionality reduction or noise removal. So to fully understand this, we have to actually first understand what an autoencoder is and how it works. So in the next section, or actually in the next lecture of the course, we're going to be exploring the very basics of what an autoencoder is. And I think once you actually see how an autoencoder works, it will make a lot more sense that this is something that's either unsupervised or semi-supervised. That during the training of the autoencoder, we get to use that historical data, but in the actual application and use case, it's a lot different than what we've seen before. And this is actually why autoencoders are personally one of my favorite topics. The actual understanding of the way the network operates is very simple. Autoencoders are a very simple network. However, the use cases for them are a lot more philosophical and nuanced, which is why I really enjoy autoencoders and their various applications, specifically with dimensionality reduction. So let's go ahead and explore what an autoencoder is, the network structure and architecture, and what we can use them for in the very next lecture. I'll see you there.